the minimum data requirements in China are significant, but not extraordinarily significant. There are high data requirements in other schemes also. So why is China so special? Here, it's the opportunity to utilize waivers, which is really limited and restricted. There are some options and to put in waivers, but they are very few and far between. And in some of the higher level toxicology, the primary waiver argument is positive. If you're in the CMR, if you have a positive classification, you can waive some of the studies. But that's not necessarily good for the um, acceptability of the product in the market, should we say. So here, this then often results in some very high data requirements being required and some very long timelines being put in place. And any waivers that are put forward, the acceptability of these cannot be guaranteed. I'll explain this more later on, but you just cannot get that guarantee of it. So there are risks built within the system. So you have a very fine balancing act to define what the true and accurate data requirements are, because nobody wants to waste time or waste money. It just doesn't make sense. So it is a challenging business decision on whether or not to actually go forward and notify. So here, this is a flavor of something. This is something that companies need to manage, need to be aware of, and need to have a lot of time invested into quite creatively approaching this and understanding the options that are available. So there are options, there are means out here. It's worth taking the time to explore them and get to a, a more complete assessment. There are certain areas that the reviewers really focus on. Oh, my word. And so this is part of what I want to give to you and explain to you a little bit more. Here, process charts and mass balance. I cannot understate to you how important it is to focus on those areas. These are really considered the heart of the risk assessment. Everything in your assessment flows out from the process chart and mass balance and needs to be consistent with it you will be amazed how often I see different parts of a registration that are inconsistent with process chart and mass balance. That's an automatic question from the authorities. Why are you so inconsistent? Clarify and confirm this. Make everything line up. Also in this, give clear descriptions of what actually happens. Don't give vague terminology. Don't go to the authorities. The worst thing that you could do is go to the authorities and say, ah, we have a PROC 5 scenario. That's great if you're in reach and people understand that. But if you're in China, that becomes meaningless. It becomes irrelevant. You have to describe what actually happens, step by step. Don't make assumptions. Give very clear understanding about this. When you're looking at the source data that you use, justify this source data. Um, my team think I'm somewhat um, over emphasize on this point. I'm trying to choose my words very carefully here. Um, somewhat retentive about my attention and focus on this. But it is worth doing it. Go that extra mile. Give the clear justification. Don't just simply say, oh, we do this in the US. We do this in Europe. Go beyond that. Explain why. Why is this relevant? Why is it applicable? And that then really helps explain and clarify this one. So I put down China is not the US and the EU. It isn't. China is China. They are very proud of being Chinese. So they should be. And they should not have to simply adopt what is taken in other jurisdictions and apply that into China. Too often that attitude and sentiment comes across. So be very respectful of the jurisdiction that you're operating within. Similar thing with exposure scenarios develop them carefully, explain them carefully from first principles. This really can make a significant difference to what you want to do. Then I put down here the superficial transplantation of environmental models. Posh phrase that one. I was quite proud when I came up with that. <laughs> Bottom line, if you take something, don't just drop it in and say, ah, here's the model. Respect it, use it. Explain it. Why should this model be accepted in China? How is the Chinese environment comparable to the environment built within this model? You don't have to go to huge dissertations on this, but at least explain the fundamentals behind it and why it should be so applicable. And that will then really help you in getting the message across. Because your target audience is, the reviewers are experienced in this field. They do know an awful lot about the subject matter they're in. 
but are they in, intimately familiar with all of the other models that are in place around the rest of the world? Not so much, no. Be respectful of that. Also, include uncertainty analysis. This is part of the requirements from level two onwards. It is increasingly being required in the assessment. If you ask what is contained within it, there is no guidance as to what is contained within an uncertainty analysis. But you've got to look through factor by factor what contributes to the risk characterization ratio. What influences this? Because with all risk assessments, it's not a fixed value. There is always a range behind it. It's almost a bit like a probabilistic risk assessment. And that's what you're looking at here to describe that uncertainty analysis very clearly. From here, another key point. The authorities give rigorous reviews. All sections of the dossier are reviewed by panels and groups of experts. And there is a tendency to adopt a precautionary principle in some of the decisions that are made. The feedback you get is very brief. One sentence only normally. You have a problem here. Quite cryptic to try and decipher and realize what the true meaning of that one is. And part of this behind this, I want to show a little bit about here. The notifier interacts with SEC. SEC undertake their format review. Then this is passed to the expert committee review. They give the comments and reviews. They give their comments and decisions back to SEC, who pass those on to the notifier. There is a gap and distance behind it. If you ask for queries, you're asking SEC for queries. You're not asking the expert committee. So you need quite a lot of detective work to find out exactly what is being requested, what supplement R is being put forward, and how do we need to make the adjustment to this. So here, as much communication with SCC is encouraged as possible, but be aware there is this intrinsic uncertainty. So looking at moving forward, coming towards the end of the talk here, there are some ongoing changes which, take, which are taking place in China at the minute, which Yin has talked about a little bit in her presentation, so I won't go over in great detail. But there is consultation at the minute on updating the guidance documents. The key point that I would emphasize here, the focus is on clarification and removal of ambiguity. There has been a phenomenal amount of lobbying to the authorities on specific uh, portions of this to loosen and reduce some of the requirements or increase some of the waiver elements behind this. Nothing the authorities can do can contravene order number seven, which they're working to. And the authorities are listening to voices from industry, their own expert committees, and the government themselves. And it's the expert committee and the government that, bottom line, they are the ones that make the decision. So it will be very interesting to see and follow through what level of change and modification is going to come through in the end. Bottom line here, monitor what the authorities are, are doing to find out some updates from them. Look to factor in some of the uncertainties. What are some of the uncertainties that could be in play now? How does that affect any registrations that you've got planned and ongoing at the minute? And make sure you have contingency plans to actually deal with them. That's another presentation topic that could probably take another 30 minutes to talk about. And you'll be glad to know I haven't got 30 more minutes to talk about that, so I won't here. With this one, last slide, key points here, plan well. There are long timelines, you've got to manage those. Be careful on what the data requirements are for the waivers and make sure that you pay particular attention to them. Robustness of the risk assessment and the waivers really can pay dividends for you. Anticipate what the authorities are likely to ask you and make sure you address that within the assessments that you put forward. And closely track the changes and developments that are ongoing at the minute with the legislative update. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.